Let's talk about vice jaws, soft jaws in particular. We're gonna make a set today, quick and easy set that you'll use most commonly, and we'll cover a lot of small parts you have, and we'll talk about these that will allow you to do larger shapes and odd shapes and things like that. Starting over here, these are a pair of standard six inch Kurt style vice jaws. And these are hardened steel. They are ground, pretty precise, pretty much our everyday go-to for square, rectangular, prismatic shapes that you can clamp on, that you have access to flat surfaces to hold on to. Over here, we're looking at a basic application for soft jaws. Making a part like this, you might have some difficulty in holding it securely to do an operation on it or to finish a second side, something like that. Soft jaws give you the ability to cut into the jaw. These are aluminum most commonly, but you can make it out of whatever you want. If you're gonna have do thousands of parts, you might have multiple pieces set up in one jaw set and maybe you'll make them out of steel so they wear slower. But what it does is it allows you to cut into the jaw any shape that you need to match the form of your part and clamp it more securely than you would if it was just in a flat jaw. This would be even better if it was profiled to the part, but for this operation we were doing, it didn't matter. This is another very common set. These are old, you can tell, because they uh, haven't been used in a while. And a lot of these, these were used mainly for cutting circles. So you're able to clamp on round stock or round parts very precisely and very securely. You can see a smaller diameter in here. And then if you open the jaw, you can see that this one was cut at a larger diameter so you can fit a large round part in here also. So these are what we're gonna make today. This is a standard common set that we use. They are based off of the standard six inch vice jaw. They're a little bit taller, which gives you the ability to flip them over and use both sides. So if you look, you can see a little bit of oblong in the hole and the counter bore for these. That is so that it will fit on the Kurt vice either way. And then here's another example of a little bit more of a setup for an odd part. You know, it's a round part with different uh, diameter balls on it. And we had to drill holes in it perpendicular to the center line of the part through the center of the ball. So what we did is we made a soft jaw. So we're clamping on the large diameter here, the small diameter here. And then we also have a stepped parallel that we made. So the parallel sits in here and gives support to the bottom of the part. And that gives us our parallel alignment to the center line of the part and then we have our stop over here also another good use of soft jaws you can make it as complicated as you need to to get the job done so let's grab these and take a look at them on the vise if you compare these to the standard Kurt, the thicker portion goes on the bottom and that gives you your whole alignment if you look straight in through here there we go and the difference with these that we're gonna make, they're a little bit taller. So it gives you more meat to cut into and use for your shapes you need to cut out of it. But it also allows you to use both sides. So you can see that it lines up with the hole here and being an oblong cutout pocket, you can use that side too. So now you have a top and a bottom surface you can use for different shapes or placement of a jaw set as you do production, things like that. So I'm gonna show you the machining of one of these vice jaws. We've set it up so that we can do the holes in the pockets with one tool, and that allows us to eliminate all tool changes in this operation. We can just pop in the next part and the next part and just cut them all with one tool. For a machine that doesn't have a tool changer, that's a pretty easy way to make your operations more efficient, even if you have to slow down the speeds or play around the programming a little bit. So we've got a 3 8 inch rougher finisher in here that'll allow us to go full depth in there and just uh, pocket out as we need.
It's a really good idea to have a program like this saved on your machine. It will allow you to make these whenever you need to or want to. I'm gonna show you a couple of things with these. First of all, if you noticed, I didn't have any stop on the X here. I just cut the jaws a little bit over six inches long because I like them to hang out a little bit. And then I just visually center it. These are just uh, bandsaw cut parts and the edges and corners are deburred. I don't bother facing the ends and this is extruded bar stock. I don't face any of the faces. At least at this stage, if I need to, for the part that we're gonna clamp on, I'll do that as the job comes along. But I don't really recommend doing any of that work beforehand because it's so time consuming, it, it's usually unnecessary. If you wanted to make the jaw so that it was very repeatable over you know, multiple installations. If you run a part every couple months, you have a batch of these that you run. You might want to face the back and the bottom so that you have a consistent reference point for the jaw itself because that's going to translate to your part when you're machining it. Generally, this uh, extruded stock is pretty good, but it's not super flat. So you might have a possibility of it rocking around and maybe you install it slightly different one time than you do another time. But generally we leave it rough. I would make up a batch of these, maybe 10 or 20 of them, and that'll last us a couple months. And then uh, when you need to, you just run some more.